Welcome back to America Decides and our continuing coverage of the Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee. It's day three of that convention. Hogan Gidley and Haima Moore join me now. Hogan formerly served as White House Deputy Press Secretary in the Trump administration. He and I remember that. Haima previously worked as a senior official within the Democratic National Committee. Haima, I want to start with you. I know we're here. It's a Republican story, but I want you to answer this question. Does the future of the Biden candidacy and path to the nomination for the Democratic Party look tonight as tenuous as it looks to a lot of people across the country? Hey, Major, thank you for having me on. Look, Joe Biden has been a fantastic president. He's been very strong. He's been a very strong candidate. He beat uh, um, Donald Trump in 2020. Uh, but things are things are, are tough right now. And I think uh, Joe Biden wants to have the space and the time to make a decision about his candidacy, uh, but he's still a strong candidate. Space and time. The Biden campaign, as you know, Haima, keeps saying, we don't need any space, we don't need any time, we've already decided, and yet other Democrats don't seem willing to accept that. Can you resolve that tension for us, if it's possible? Yeah, and, and you've heard from our leaders, you've heard from, from Leader Jeffries and Schumer and, and others and Nancy Pelosi, and you know, they, they have taken the, the notes from other members to the president, to the president's campaign, and they are giving the president time uh, to make a final decision. I mean, the time's running out, and I think, you know, he said before, he believes he can beat Donald Trump again. I believe that he can, and I think many members of our party believe that, believe that as well. Uh, but we want to make sure that, he, that he's final, that he can do it, that he has the stamina, that he has the, the desire to do it. Uh, and then once he makes that final decision, everyone's going to support him and follow, and follow in line. I'm going to stay with us, please. I want to bring in Hogan Gidley. You heard that conversation, Hogan. What is your perspective on this constant Democratic conversation and what effect it has on the fundamentals of this campaign? Well, it seems as though Joe Biden has already made his decision. He said he's running. He says he's the nominee. What I'm finding interesting is the contrast. We've been to several of these events before, Major. Seeing what, what this RNC was able to accomplish on the first night, bringing in Amber Rose, for example. A lot of people looked at me and said, who's that? I said, I don't even have time to explain it. And then the Teamsters president comes out and adjusts the crowd as well. Amazing. And we're sitting here saying, not only has Donald Trump unified the Republican Party, now he's trying to go outside of that tent, going to the Bronx, going to other places that Republicans typically don't go. And you look on the other side, uh, Joe Biden is still trying to court black individuals in July. So his base is problematic, and half the people in the party want him not to be the nominee. Now, while as, as chaotic as it may be now, you and I both know there are a million lifetimes between now and November. A lot can happen. A lot's going to change. And this convention, while successful so far, and I imagine we're going to see a good exclamation point, you still got to put in the work needed to win elections at the local level. To that point, Hogan Gidley, I interviewed Brian Kemp, Republican governor of Georgia, experienced politician. He said, look, I get the enthusiasm. I've talked to a lot of Republicans. Yeah. They're jacked up. They believe it's all over. And he's saying, hold your horses, people. Do the work. And if you don't do the work, you could lose this all. Yeah, ask him about the red wave. How, how That's that what exactly what he brought and up no, to me. There, there's no question. The people in this room, though, I think it's a different sentiment I feel from them. And I've experienced, again, having done this now for 25 years, the folks here understand it does take hard work. And so the non-sexy parts of politics, what you do every day in front of the camera, you got to get out there, roll up your sleeves, and poll watch. You have to poll work. You have to register voters. You have to mobilize voters. Those are the nuts and bolts that you can do to win elections. And Democrats have killed us in that uh, arena for the last several years. And so we've got to focus on that. Jaime, let's pick up on that point, because that was a probably indirect compliment that Hogan Gidley just paid to the Democratic National Committee and the Biden-Harris campaign circa 2020. Is it harder to do that work, that fundamental work, voter contact, voter registration, voter motivation, when there's still uncertainty about who the nominee is going to be? No, look, and Hogan, thank you for that compliment. I appreciate it. You know, one of the things that Chairman Jamie, Jamie Harrison sure. has done uh, over, over the past four years is make sure that infrastructure of this party is in the sound in place, raising money, reaching voters all over the country. I disagree with, you know, with Hogan and other, other members of the Republican Party. Black voters can see right through some of the things that were displayed at the RNC this week. Uh, and they're not, and black voters are not listening to Amber Rose. I hate to say it. But black voters do understand that Joe Biden has been a strong president. Kamala Harris has been a strong vice president. And, and they, they brought to the table some needs and desires of that community. And so I don't think that two weeks of, of, of Donald Trump and the Republicans going out after black voters is going to be enough. Uh, lastly, I, I, one of the things that we really, really pride ourselves on in this party is 
doing outreach even without when there's not an election. And we've been doing that for years and years and years and years. And so I think that's going to pay uh, dividends in the fall. And Jaime, I want to ask you, give you a chance, then I'll get Hogan's response. J.D. Vance on the Trump ticket. What does it mean from your and the Democratic Party's perspective? Look, Senator, Senator Vance has, 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 a, has a great career, and he's a, and he's a fantastic person, I'm sure. Uh, but what the Democrats are saying is he is just another clone, a double down of former President Donald Trump. And so I don't think that it adds much to the ticket. I respect the uh, former president and the, and, and the senator, but I don't think it adds much to that ticket at all. And I think Joe Biden and Kamala Harris still present the strongest, the strongest option for the country. Hogan, you get the last word on this. Look, I think J.D. Vance is a unique pick in large part because he didn't support the president before. What better messenger to go into suburbia and say, I was you, I understand. But let me tell you about the man I got to know and the policies he put in place. And while two weeks, he's right, may not encapsulate or, or solidify or solve the problem we have with the black voter, the last four years of paying too much for gas and groceries sure helps. Hogan, Hyman, thanks so very much. I appreciate it both to have you with us.